Kia ora. it's wonderful to have you here. We are constantly communicating with people in our lives, people that we know well, people that we don't know very well, and often our communication can uh, actually impact the relationship quite significantly, for better or for worse. And one of the negative ways that we can communicate is falling into the traps of power games. Now, often these are not intended to be power games. They may just be ways of communicating that we've learned, that we've grown up with, um, that, that are familiar to us and that we haven't really thought too deeply about. And they can still cause negative side effects. They can also create problems in the relationship. They can really kill the communication in the moment. And so it's worth looking at them and looking for them in all of the communications that we have. So this workshop is all about looking for seven of these types of power games and also looking for some healthy alternatives because it is important to know what we need to be able to do, not just what we need to stop doing. Now, these are not just about how we communicate with our children. They are about how we communicate with any human beings that we come into contact with, even how we communicate with ourselves. So let's take a look at what actually is a power game. Basically, it's any or all of these seven. Whether if you're creating a winner-loser scenario, then that's a power game. If you're creating yourself as the winner and someone else as, as uh, not as good as the loser, as less than you, then that is uh, a potential power game there. If you're blocking the communication and not allowing it to flow, um, you know, causing, causing it to halt, then that definitely is going to kill the communication. Another type of power game is derailing or distracting, distracting from the flow. So sending it off in a different direction and uh, not allowing the, the where it was going to continue. So the person gets pulled away from what they were wanting to work on with you and to, to deal with with you. Um, also, putting the focus all on you and you, how superior you are, like, you know, this is, um, you know, I, but I, well, I've done this. Well, you know, and, and implying that the other person is not as good. So bringing the focus onto yourself in that way and also bringing the focus onto others. So lumping them with the blame, the shame, the humiliation, um, you know, when someone's coming and talking with you about uh, something that they're upset about and then you lash out, well, but you did X, Y, Z and sending the... Um, the, the focus back onto the other person in a in a negative way. And when you are a bit uh, obtuse in your communication, you know, leaving leaving gaps, waiting for some other people to keep up, making other people do extra work to keep up. That's a bit of a power game. The other person can be feeling like they're scrambling just to keep up with you. And then that has the sense of that you're superior and that they're just not quite not quite good enough and that can really kill communication and, and damage create some damage in the relationship and also if you are abusing your control of the conversation so you you are you are holding control of what's happening and then you just say well this is how it's going to be and it might be and combined with any of those other ways that uh, we create power games in our communications so that's what we're looking with here, the dealing with. And of course, it isn't about someone um, intentionally being a horrible person. A lot of what we are doing is just really taking uh, what we've learned throughout our lives and, and putting it into place without questioning, without checking, hmm, why am I doing this? What's underneath what I'm doing here? We're often doing this very um, unconsciously. So this is an opportunity to start growing some consciousness about these ways that we can hijack or derail or um, interfere with the positive flow of a communication. So let's have a look now at some common power games that are happening quite a lot. So one of them here is when you overpower 
a person with your logic, your loudness or your silence. So you're manipulating the conversation and you're trying to use logic to have them be confounded, loudness to have them feel like they need to submit or silence and that you are manipulating the conversation so that they don't know what's coming. They're confused. So that's one power game. Here's a, another one, making a statement that as if it's the truth, like you are this, or I am that, or this is all about X, Y, Z, as if it is the truth. And it's a hard and fast label or description that, um, you know, could really be up for grabs, but you're saying it like it's the truth. And it makes it difficult for people to, um, to engage with you because you've, said something, boom, that's it. So that's the second common power game. The third one here is to, to crush the other person's emotion or, or sidestep it. So ignore where they're at and take the conversation in a way that you want it to go, usually because you're uncomfortable with the other person's emotion. You want to say, oh, don't feel like that. No, this is, this is um, oh, this is not a crying issue. Come on, just cheer up. Or, or don't don't be angry, calm down. That's the usual one, isn't it? So frustrating when someone says that. And this is a real power game that that halts the conversation and it has the other person feel like they are to blame and that you're superior. Okay, so that's number three. Number four, uh, when you ask a question and yet you only expect yes as a response. Okay, so when you're asking a question and, and giving people options, you need to be available and open to the possibility that they could say no. And yet, with especially with children, but also with adults as well, we often ask a question and expect a yes. So um, would you would you mind turning out the light? You're you're asking a question, would they mind? And they might have to get up and get themselves uncomfortable in order to go and turn out the light. They, they might mind, they might want to not be very happy about this, but you're wanting them to say, oh, sure, I'll do it. And actually, in that example, it's the opposite way around. You know what I mean, though, that you're you're wanting the child to say yes to it's time to go. So you, you might say, um, shall we go now? And you want them to say yes. And they're like, well, but um, actually, I don't want to. I don't want to go, but they know that actually your answer expectation is for the yes. So that's number four. Number five, when we judge people using our body language or our tone or our words, and often all three, um, and, and we make it like they are, there's something wrong with them. There's something to be judged. There's something negative about them. And that lifts us into a superior position and, and them into inferior. And that's a power game too. And we're also acting as if it is the truth. You can see a, a combination of lots of these different power games often mash in together. So that's number five. Now, number six is when you will refuse to take responsibility for something that you've done or if you're not acknowledging not apologizing um not actually having integrity in your actions and and that's a real power game when and and a lot of adults still do this a lot of parents still do this to their children they they don't want to apologize they believe in themselves that they do not need to apologize even when a little sneaky feeling of oh Yes, I didn't behave so well, and they're still not apologizing. So, or acknowledging or taking responsibility. So, this is experienced as a power game for our tamariki and and um, you know other adults as well when we sidestep that integrity. And then number seven, and this um, you know this was mentioned just before when you're being obtuse or confusing or unclear vague leaving a gap waiting for the person to guess and they're like I don't want to get it wrong I don't want to look like an idiot for not knowing you know you're not building enough of a bridge with the communication to make it actually work well in the relationship so mm, number seven 
that sort of power game can be really um, yeah difficult for the other person. Now let's take a look at some healthier options, options that are kinder, more fair and um, more connecting for the relationship. So instead of what was what the first option before the first style of um, power game, which was overpowering with the logic, instead pause, acknowledge your own emotions and your struggle and their emotions and struggle and give a bit of space rather than plowing on with the logic or the loudness. Now, this is a pause that is full of kindness and care rather than a silence which is full of daggers and blame and judgment. So a pause is very, very different to just remaining silent. You might acknowledge that, wow, this is difficult. Uh, you may, you know, say it out loud or just show with your, your body language, this is, this is tricky. So knowing when to just stop and pause rather than pushing on. Instead of being really, um, so for the second one here, instead of making statements as if they were the facts, as if they were true, you can say what you see and make sure that they are, um, that, that, that what, you, what you're seeing, what you're, what you're talking about, what, they're, what you're seeing is actually more true. So, wow, it looks like we're getting a bit worked up here or this was really important to you. Um, I, I don't quite understand yet. Let's talk about it. And making requests of the person. So, well, I can see this is really upsetting for you right now. Um, we need to make a take a pause and work it through later. So um, I'm going to step away and um, and we'll come back and talk about it in five minutes. Does that work for you? So making requests in a kind, firm and clear way. Is a, is a really great option to um, to making those, you know, you are this, you are that. Instead, saying what we see and then making requests. Perhaps we want them to change their behavior. We can request that without the judgment, without the um, labeling. So now, instead of crushing the other person's emotion, you can acknowledge their emotional experience. And I've just given couple of examples in there. Um, well, it looks like this is, you know, pretty big for you. Um, all right, I can this is this is becoming a bit worked up. Let's take a pause. Or something to acknowledge the other person rather than telling them not to behave like that. Um, you could say, gosh, yeah, you're really upset about this. Um, or, you know, is this is this really hard for you to hear? Okay, got it. So rather than telling them they shouldn't be feeling this way. And before, um, instead of um, asking a question that only expects the yes, you can only offer the choice. How about only offer the choice if there really is a choice, if it's actually true that they can say no to it. So, um, you know, if you're going to say, shall we go now? Let's expect that they might say no. Another way to say that, uh, if you really do need to go and, and going now is not really the option, it might be, it's time to go. Will you clean up or will I help you? Or it's time to go. Uh, would you like a carry to the car or would you like to walk? So if there really isn't a choice, then state that there isn't a choice and then offer another space where there is a choice uh, so that can save you from that that power game there instead of judging people um, and and we do this a lot this is very deeply embedded in our societal genetic pool um, we we you know we've grown up we grow up expecting to be judged and expecting to judge people and Instead of that, there's a movement now realizing that we don't need to judge other people. We don't need to compare. We don't need to um, make out like they're wrong and and you're right or the other way around. So instead of that, for number five, a healthier option is to notice your own inner reaction 
you know, notice that you're reacting to them, that you're not liking something about what they're doing. You can own that and you can say what's true for you. I'm finding this conversation really hard. I'm experiencing the way you're talking to me so aggressively. I don't appreciate it. I can't, I'm not coping very well with it. Let's pause rather than you are a bully or, you know, you are being aggressive. Um, you're saying I'm experiencing this as aggressive and it's, it feels subtle and you've got to play with it and see what works, see what words come out. Ultimately, though, this is um, really, really helpful to notice what's true for you. It's kind of like the say what you see instead of the other person. It's the say what you see in yourself. Notice your own inner reaction. Own that and let people know what needs to happen there. So that was number five. Now, number six, there's um, that time of just refusing to take responsibility acknowledge or acknowledge or, or apologize for what's going on really really helpful instead to admit fault when it's true repair as much as you can and then move on don't just skirt around it and pretend it's not happening don't just dive into the next thing to and hope that they um, missed the fact that you haven't taken a, uh, acknowledgement or you haven't taken responsibility or apologized much better to clean it up before moving on you'll move on much more strongly and powerfully and instead of being um, a, a bit confusing and unclear and kind of playing that game where people have to keep up otherwise they're you know no good it's useful to help the other person understand fully and make it easier for them rather than laying breadcrumbs and hoping that they'll pick up the trail I've been on the other end of this where I've had to try and keep up and I it just, it does not feel good. I feel on the back foot. I feel a bit incompetent um, and it's, it's not fun. And it could be helpful for the other person to recognize that that's happening and um, lay some more breadcrumbs, fill in the gaps a bit more or, you know, stop and stop before moving on. So here we go. Here's a bit of a table of the different power games and then the healthier options that we can choose instead. So it's useful now to have a bit of a look at what is uh, some of what are some of the power games that you do that, uh, yeah, you know, you, you do sometimes and that uh, maybe you could choose, you could choose one of the healthier options instead to um, make the power game far more of an even playing field. Now, uh, no, I'm just going to do a little bit of a look through here and see which ones I um, see which ones I would do. Yeah, I think I've certainly done the overpowering with logic. Yes. And um, well, I'm pretty sure I've probably made some statements as if they were the truth. I'm getting better with that one. I'm getting a lot better with not crushing the other person's emotion. Oh yeah, I, I think I do often ask a question and I want a yes and although I accept the no, I, it's a bit grudging. It's not really graceful. So I definitely can practice that one. Um, the judgment, yeah, I wear my heart on my sleeve and any judgment deep inside me just comes straight out. So a little bit of digging under there and seeing, okay, what's going on? Why am I feeling the need to judge people and criticize them? And, and start to peel off a few more of the layers there. Uh, and the taking responsibility, yeah, sometimes I, I could well get on and acknowledge that I think I often skirt around and uh, move on and um, I don't know if I do it intentionally but perhaps I do be a bit unclear a bit confusing and want and uh, so noticing if people are struggling with what I'm saying and, and just slowing down a little bit changing the words filling in gaps not assuming prior understanding or, or interest in areas so there we go. Those are some of the changes that I'm planning to make. Which ones will you make? Now we've got another set of seven. I'm going for the seven, seven, sevens here. So that one about uh, expecting a yes. 
Uh, so here are seven alternatives to do you want to, because do you want to is really saying, do you want to? Not when will you or I want you to, so you will. It's do you want to? And that's a question that they could, children or other adults could very happily say yes or no to. So instead, if you really need it to be done, and you don't want whether they do it to be a question, you could say, when will you do the thing? Or else, how would you like to begin doing the X, Y, Z? So you're asking about how they're going to do it or when they're going to do it. And then here, how about this one? Would you like some help with? So it's not up for grabs whether or not they're going to do it. What's up for grabs is um, whether they'd like some help and whether you're going to get involved or not. Uh, will you do A or B? So giving two options there and either of them you're happy with. Be aware that you need to offer two even options and be graceful with whichever one they choose. You are giving them an option after all. And here is another possibility. Will you do the X, Y, Z before or after? you've done the other option. So uh, that could be an, an example of, um, I know you wanted to go and play with the dog outside. Uh, will you do set the table before you do that or after you've played with the dog? Okay, another one here, and this is not a question, this is time to. So it's time to go, time to set the table. And then that might lead into one of these other questions about when or how. Um, how would you like it to go? And then number seven, what ideas have you got to do the setting of the table or to clear the dishes or to tidy up your room or whatever they are? Actually, I don't like that tidy up the room one. I think we should leave children to have their room in whatever space they want it to. And eventually they will figure out what they want for their space, as long as it's not a shared space. That's just an aside, slight distraction. So what ideas have you got to do this job that you need to do? Have a play with those alternatives. Instead of saying, do you want to? Instead, you're saying, what ideas have you got? And then the last one here we have, these are seven ways to agree without agreeing. So this is where you are actually helping to um, boost the confidence of the people that you're working with and you're, um, you're, you're wanting to um, agree with them without it stopping there. You're wanting to have them feel good about their contribution and there's going to be more. So here's one here, great idea. Here's mine too, my option as well. Interesting, tell me more. There's another one. And number three, thanks for thinking about it. Yeah, so you're acknowledging that the person has done some thinking and come back with an idea. You haven't said you'll accept the idea. You've acknowledged that they've done that work. Wow, okay, let's talk. There's another one. So this is a way of, um, you know, acknowledging there's effort happened and that there's more coming. You're keen for that to happen, huh? So that adds um, a little bit of possibility that it might, uh, and you're really acknowledging that they want it to. What a creative option. Let's see what will work. So this is where you could work it through in maybe a, in a logic way or in an experiential way and, um, and see whether their idea is actually likely to work. And now, and now we've got two ideas. Which one will we choose? So again, there's an openness there and it's not full agreement. So that was a little bit of a bonus there to help uh, to, instead of crushing the child's um, communication or their idea or the, per the other person's idea, instead of crushing it and saying, no, that, don't, that won't work for these reasons, or no, I don't want that. What are you thinking? That's really chopping the conversation. That's really, that's a power game when we say no to people in those ways and we don't let that possibility stay open. <sighs> there was a whole lot that we've looked at today. So have a think about what you enjoyed in that session. 
Uh, what do you understand differently about children, parenting, relationships in general? What is it that um, has really stood out for you uh, from, from the session? What are you going to try differently tomorrow? What is something that you're going to try differently? And what other parenting skills or relationship skills would really help you in your life? Have a think about all of those. Let me know. And then we're going to move on to some questions. We are all about here at Powerful Parenting World, um, being the sort of parent, actually enjoying being the sort of parent that you want to be. And also, we've got a focus on making the most of being human. That starts with child age, all the way through, all the way through our lives. How can we make the most of being human and help other people make the most of being human also? Thank you very much. Let's see what questions we have.